Welcome to Cat's Cadenza, the place for alternative rock bands. We have a very special guest in studio. We have Corey Harper right, and Tony Oni in studio, award-winning saxophonist, composer, and educator Alex On. So, according to your Twitter, you like guacamole and hate the dentist. Can you tell us more about that? Now, here's your host, Katherine Barner. It's really it's it's sexy, refreshing. Yeah. 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 So, so before we dive into that a little bit more, can you all introduce yourselves and tell us about your role? I'm Ian. I play guitar and sing in the band. I'm Joey. I play bass. I'm Garrett. I play drums. I'm Scotty. I play guitar. So, you guys are a garage rock band. Is that how you would describe your sound specifically? Yeah. Just, it's just a good general term for. Just, you know, for a nice shitty tone, it's a good excuse so you can say you can get away yeah. with it. So who are your biggest influences then? Oh, man. Uh, personally, uh, Iggy Pop and the Stooges mm-hmm. is one of my favorites and inspirations. The OCs. The OCs, yeah. That one's obvious. Uh, as far as drumming, just like, I think just my friend Beef. My, Who's your friend Beeve? My friend Beeve, he's a great great musician. Yeah, and I just, I don't know, just want to tell me how to drum. Okay, and cool. Garen, I used to be in another garage rock band with him. I think like three years ago. Three years ago. What about you, Scotty? Uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, I like all sorts of music. Uh, kind of have a firm blues background. Um, I guess like modern day uh, King Tuff. Together, Pangea, Ty Siegel, DLCs, and in that, yeah, yeah, I've always wanted to play in a band like this. So. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned the bluesy part, because one of my friends who was listening to you guys earlier said that he kind of hears this, like, bluesy tone going on in your music. Do you think that influences you at all, playing in this band? Uh, it does, especially, I mean, I add my own parts, because on the recording, I'm not actually on it, so it kind of gave me the freedom to kind of express some of my influences, you know, and they're been pretty cool about it. They haven't said it sucked yet, so <laughs> if they have, they haven't told me, so. <laughs> you're the newest member, correct? Yeah, I've been here, what, three or four months now? Yeah, yep. I think your first show was in April. Yep. So, yeah. Cool. So, you, before the album was released today, you had three singles on a released, and how did you choose those ones specifically to show the world first? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, speed hating, I think, we chose that one because it was at the time it was our newest song like we hadn't finished writing it when we were tracking drums for it and i think it was just kind of fresh so like i personally was like let's throw the newest one on the one we had the most fun playing so uh so that's why we chose that one uh lake trash it's been one of our oldest songs besides kill me um yeah i don't know lake trash was pretty straightforward song so I thought that'd be a good one and then Kill Me uh, honestly personally it's my favorite on the album mix wise okay. so I, I figured we'd share that <laughs> honestly they didn't they didn't get a say because I'm a control freak no not really <laughs> <laughs> so what was the process of recording the album like that uh, it was awesome uh, we uh, tracked at first, we did like a live setup at okay. a, coffee, a local coffee roasting company that Joey and I actually work at in the warehouse to kind of get the reverby sound mm-hmm. for the drums. And then we went back through and tightened up the bass and guitar and vocals. Um, but that took a long time, like with the schedules conflicting. And Ethan McCracken, the guy who recorded the album, he's in a band as well. So we kind of had to work with his schedule with them playing mm-hmm. um, different shows. So it took like probably six months to finish the album, maybe longer than that. Yeah, pretty typical for album. Some yeah, albums even totally. take longer. But True. Yeah. yeah. So the album is titled Pleasure Island. Where'd you come up with that name? Uh, I actually got the idea from Pinocchio. Uh, it's the place where all the boys go. Oh really? And they like <laughs> drink and smoke and party, and then they all turn to jackasses. And we're we've been doing that since we were. 
I don't know, 18, 19, and we're a bunch of jackasses. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, it's, yeah, that's kind of where I got the inspiration. So I thought it was funny sounding. So before the interview started, you told me you guys have been a band for about two years now. Yeah. And you didn't really start playing shows until a year ago. Why is that? Um, it took a while. It took a while. <laughs> Get things going. Yeah, like we, like Garrett's never played drums in a band before. Okay. Um, I've never sang in a band before. Joey used to play in worship band at church. So it was like <laughs> yeah, our. Not a lot, not a lot <laughs> of uh, experience. Yeah, it was. we were trying something new mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure we sounded good before we just went out there yeah. and, you know, made asses of ourselves. So, yeah. Yeah, it's your first time singing, right? Yeah. Yeah. What did you do in a band before then? I played bass. And what about I, you? I played guitar. With, yeah, in a couple bands. So why the why the instrument instrumentation switch then? It just sounded fun, I think. Yeah. yeah. Something new. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of started this band just to have fun. Um, it's progressed a little more to something else, but we still just try to keep it as fun as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, because we've all been playing music for a long time, and we've had our moments where it's kind of gotten dull, I would say, and we're just trying to enjoy ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So now that your album is released, what's the next step for Bad Motivator, the next biggest goal? I want to put something else out as fast as we can. <laughs> Honestly, because the album took so long, and now we have Scotty, uh, so... I personally want to record as soon as we can uh -huh. and put something else out, like an EP or something. Any plans to go on the road, go on a tour anytime soon? Uh, we kind of we've been trying to do like weekend uh -huh. tours because um, we all work full time. Yeah, so we've just been doing weekend things. We're going to Seattle in a couple months. <laughs> cool. So. so where can the audience connect with you guys on social media? Um, pretty much any. It's always Bad Motivator Music, so Instagram is Bad Motivator Music, Corporate. Facebook, Bad Motivator Music, uh, CorporateRecords.com, Corporate Records is a record label that we released our album on, um, our buddy Chris recently asked us to release an album, that's kind of why we recorded the album, um, Garrett has another project called Indian Goat, and they released an album off Corporate as well, as well as Ethan, the guy who recorded our album, his Bandage Kitty, also released an album with Corporate, so... Check that out. That's it. Covered that. Any other plugs? Anything else you'd like to say before I let you guys go? We're on SoundCloud, right? We're, we, we're on SoundCloud. We will be on SoundCloud. We will be on SoundCloud. Yeah. Well, where, where can the audience find your music right now? Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp, soon to be SoundCloud, and YouTube, I think. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. All the good places. Well, thank you guys for taking the time to chat with me. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Totally. If Sorry, you, we're awkward. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this interview, go ahead below and click that like button. Also, click that subscribe button because I do tons of awesome interviews with bands just like Bad Motivator. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.